Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star signs reading with myself, Thomas Yamak. We are looking at the week of May the 10th to the 16th, 2021. There is a new moon on the 11th. <coughs> Excuse me. And so new moon obviously means new beginning. There's another interesting thing about um, the depiction of a new moon, which obviously is that a new moon happens when, at least as you see it from Earth, 0% of um, the moon is illuminated. Now, the idea is to also remember that sometimes when you can't see a thing, that's not supposed to scare you. When you can't see a thing, you have no stimuli. And therefore, there is no destructions. So, allowing the new moon to come in and um, help you with new beginnings, it's also a good day um, and a good energy to have for blocking out all that chatter. So if you are a person who has problems um, getting that chatter to a, to a level where you function, then your task to begin with this week, before we even go into the over energy and then ultimately the star signs, is to um, find a way to, to be calmer. Um, you could do meditation, you could just uh, listen to soft music, um, preferably with no um, lyrics so you're not distracted. Um, and you could also, obviously, be in nature and charge your battery this way, right? So, just a couple of ideas. Now we're looking at the week of May the 10th to the 16th, 2021. If Molly lets me, um, just a couple of minutes ago, I needed um, a pair of scissors. And when I got the scissors, I came across, across these um, napkins that I must have bought a while ago, or that I bought a while ago. Be happy, yay! So I thought I'm gonna bring them here. And so let's make that promise to ourselves to hire our energy this week and be happy. You can be whatever you want to be. Nobody can take it away from you if you decide, you know what, I'm gonna be happy. I make the best of whatever is happening, right? Okay. Good girl. Anyway, let's have a look at the overall energy for the week ahead. This is the overall energy, sorry, more. Here we go. Let's have a look what we got for the overall energy for the week. We're looking at the week of May the 10th to the 16th, 2021. We have the fox and the lion. So what we are being told um, is two things. Number one, we are all old souls, right? We haven't been here uh, um, uh, the first time now. We, we haven't come here for, for the first time. Obviously, we all get reincarnated. We are all old souls. What that really means is a couple of things. Number one, you have been through a lot of situations um, and while they are still reoccurring, because life is cyclical, and while things are still reoccurring, you may find that you haven't learned the lessons, otherwise they wouldn't repeat themselves, right? That's number one. And then because you are an old soul, what the universe is saying to you, you're going to be fine. Because you've been through all of this, and probably worse, time and again, right? Oh, cheeky. Okay, so don't worry about anything. You will get through this no matter what comes to you this week, right? And then you have the lion, which obviously is not about aggression, but is to realize that your personal space is what needs to be safe and perfect and guarded. So when you have a lion who's obvious, who, whose job is to... Um, really have his territory and make sure it stays safe <coughs> patrolling it the um this the symbolism here is basically for you to realize um so who is taking up 
my time. Who are or is the person or situations that keep me from recharging my battery, that keep me from growing energetically, that keep me from getting where I feel I should be at this point in time. So reflection is another keyword. The other thing about lions is, is that um, they're very social. Not, not all cats, sorry, Mona, not all cats are very social. <laughs> and the lion is known for being a very social big cat, you know. And so therefore, because it is the lion that we have been given for the overall energy, is to not fight people, right, necessarily don't get into arguments, but as it is also in the pride, um, depending on your rank, right, put people in their place, especially because obviously you're human, this is just symbology, um, you have rights, you have the right uh, to, a, to a life that isn't harmful to you, and because it is a week of reflection, the guides are asking you to reflect also is, again, as, as I said earlier, um, who is causing you distress and put them in their place, right? If that makes sense. Because it, it starts with, with you claiming your territory, with you claiming your space. And even if it is just five more minutes a day that you have to yourself, um, you know, you have the right to claim that. Okay, so that was the overall energy for the week ahead. We're looking at the week of May the 10th to the 16th. And now we're looking at the first star sign. We're still in Taurus. Let's see what we got for Taurians. Taurians, you have a really good week coming your way <laughs> because you have the Dolls Sheep, which has come up quite a lot um, in past readings. And the message is always the same. This sheep is known as a money card, is known as a card to tell you um, you will be fine because the doll sheep hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall. <coughs> and because the doll sheep happens to have the antlers around the ears, what they're asking Toreans to do this week is to pay attention to not only what is being said, but how people talk to you and to the people you love. Really, really important. But ultimately, for Taurians, you will just be fine. Right? So, that was Taurus going into the next star sign, which is Gemini. Let's have a look what we got for Gemini. Ooh, <laughs> another sheep. <coughs> Here you have the bighorn sheep, which is quite interesting because this one, for Gemini, literally denotes that you ought to reflect on your current situation. Remember, we have a new moon coming in, right? So try to have um, not too much chatter going on in your life <clears throat> and try to realize or allow yourself to realize rather that um, when you want new beginnings to happen, you have to state it, right? Frustration is not a good thing uh, for Gemini. And there's an energy here of frustration as well <coughs> with, with Gemini. But because you have the bighorn sheep, it sort of denotes, energetically speaking, sort of living in canyons and living um, in places where you have a natural echo, which means your opinions carry and your knowledge is important. And Whatever it is you give out comes back to you, which is really, really important because if you give out frustration, the universe has no other choice than sending you people who will frustrate you, right? So watch your own energy this week, Geminis. Watch your own energy. Really, really important, right? That was Gemini, <coughs> excuse me, going into the next star sign, which is Cancer. Let's have a look what we got for Cancer. I'm just drawn to a totally different deck here. Let's have a look. Here we go. So, Cancerians, you have the cow and the snake. What the guides are saying to you is, this is a week for you 
to treat yourself right. This is a week for you to pay attention to your emotions. How are you really feeling? And this is a week for you to realize it's time I looked after myself, whatever that means, <coughs> excuse me, in your particular case. Because the cow is also known as the Übermother, which means you are, by default, a very, very caring person. But you also may be a person that people can take advantage of um, because of your giving nature. And then you have the snake, which is the animal of uh, healing and protection, because when you go to the pharmacy, you see a snake around the cane. So it is not a negative animal at all, or a negative uh, depiction at all. And obviously, snakes have to shed their skin. So what the guides are saying to you is, as you stop for a second, Cancerians, as you stop and say like, okay, it's time to look at myself. How do I feel? And it's time to look after myself, do the things that make me feel good. And I also get a big thing about health this week. So pay attention to uh, your calorie intake, um, are you in a place that feels toxic? Um, do you live in a place where, where, where there's a lot of pollution, be it emotional or simply by just the location? So pay attention to the influences that come your way that have an effect on your, um, on your well-being, if that makes sense, right? <coughs> so that's what we got. That's what we got for uh, Cancerians. And uh, for those of you who haven't quite skipped to your star sign, right? Okay, I just get a message here that um, there's a phone call coming in and that the recording will be stopped when I answer it, but I'm not gonna answer it because I'm recording. I just don't know if you hear a sound um, or not. So um, I will just decline it and then, oh, I stopped now. <laughs> so I hope you could hear this. <coughs> I was just saying, before that phone call showed up there. <coughs> We're in the star sign of Leos, and I just wanted to say before we look into Leo, if you are um, one of those few people that don't go from the over energy straight to your star sign, you will already have noticed that there's overlapping energy um, between the star signs, and we have that a lot. Now, one of the overall um, overlapping things that we get here is, huh, what's the word? is for you to realize that um, how you treat yourself and how much space you give to other people and how you allow people to influence you energetically all plays a role. So this has come up for, for each star sign here. So um, while we're in Leo, I'm sure, because the guides you know, mentioned this, uh, I'm sure this is, uh, this is a topic for Leos too. So, but we will know more once I have the um, the uh, the cards for you. And you have the osprey and the brown bear. So, the bear on a whole is all about healing. So, this is another case of of you being asked to look into your own well-being. This is not just about physical things. This is a psychic reading, right? So. I don't get all that much about, about physical well-being, <coughs> if that makes sense. So this is all about trauma for Leos this week. This is all about stuff that you have carried around for quite some time. But as you are going through healing, Leos, you have the Osprey. And the Osprey is saying to you, you have already made a lot of progress. You're not beginning to heal. You just sometimes are too busy continuing. And all they're saying to you is your soul has already realized and started to, again, um, let go of stuff that isn't quite helping or wasn't quite working. And so for you this week is um, to have a quiet week, if that makes sense. Because obviously I, I mentioned the, um, don't know where I put it now, but I mentioned the, um, <coughs> sorry, the be happy napkin that I, that I, that I got. Be happy. So um, so obviously there's bees here. <laughs> and bears and bees have contracts together. So therefore, what the guides are asking you is to, um, is to not necessarily go things alone. 
right? If you're feeling unwell, if you're feeling, oh, I'm going through through crap here, this is not necessarily a week for Leos to isolate yourself, right? Reach out to people that you love and that you trust and that you can tell things to, right? And don't think you, you, you burden them. But importantly, um, for Leos, because you had the Osprey, which is a bird of prey, that tells you any trouble that comes your way, you already know about it or you see it coming. So don't be anticipating trouble, if that makes sense. <coughs> because you have made progress in how you live your life already. And what I'm getting for Leos as well is to really, huh, sounds weird, push yourself to be your spiritual self and live that in any and every part of your being because that's also a big part of who you are. So what I'm getting is, um, and I know it might not be uh, fitting for all years now, but if you are a person on the cusp of thinking, maybe I should work spiritually, obviously, that is, um, that is here. Um, so the guides are saying to you is, yes, that would be a good time, right? But remember, when you, when you change from one thing to the other, the energy has to travel there first before you can establish yourself, right? So that's what I'm getting is don't, don't necessarily say, okay, I'm going to do it tomorrow, right? <clears throat> and then struggle for five weeks because you haven't had any clients, right? Okay? But when you say, I get it, what I came here for is not necessarily what I do. And that's a good way of manifesting change. Right? And remember, we have a new, we have a new moon um, this week, new beginnings. Really, really important for Leos to, to um, utilize this. Okay? So that was Leos. We're looking at the week of May the 10th to the 16th, 2021. And now we're going to the star sign of Virgo. Virgo. <clears throat> Again, drawn to a different deck. Okay, for Virgos, you have the energy of a full moon in Aries. <clears throat> Sounds a bit weird. What it really means for you is that things that aren't working for Virgos will not just ebb away and flow away. Um, it feels more like, you know, whatever needs to really change will have more of a fiery ending, right? Um, so what I'm getting for, for Virgos is, is more the energy of, of if this has to be pushed out, rather than gently guided out whatever is happening in your life that doesn't make you happy, now is the time to do it. Remember, you have um, full moon Aries <clears throat> and you are Virgo. None of these are aggressive energies. So they're not asking you to be aggressive or fight, but because a sort of fiery climate is coming, you are asked by the guides to no longer just look at things and think, oh, well, you know, this, this could still all change for the better, la, 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 <clears throat> when you already know it isn't. And whatever it is that you have identified as really causing you issues and maybe even damage to your soul, it's time to let that go. Okie dokie, all right. That was Virgos going to the next star sign, which is Libra. Let's have a look what we got for Librans. We have the Caribou and the Rabbit. Caribou is also known as the Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Here we go. A little, little early. Right? Singing it in May. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> Librans. You have the Caribou and the Rabbit. What the guides are saying to you is, your life as it is right now, if you just reflect on where you want to go, your life will be like this, quite stable, right? So you have the caribou, which means if the terrain gets difficult, the caribou doesn't sink in, right? Very hardy animals too. 
And so you're at no risk at having the rug pulled out from under you, if that makes sense. Right? And then you have the rabbit. And the rabbit is all about realizing that sometimes, and this seems to be a topic this week, things need to really come to an end or need to really be looked at to be tweaked, if that makes sense. And the rabbit hole is basically saying things are diversifying and there's other ways that you can deal with things or there's other areas that you could go to. Your life is by no means um, um, over and your life is by no means fixed on one thing, but you need to see it first, if that makes sense, right? And so what the guides are saying to you is, if you, um, if you are thinking about changes and changing things that aren't working for you, you are a person simply because of um, the energy of Libra that you obviously that, that you probably had that obviously that you had in, imprinted upon you upon uh, um, your birth. Um, you quite. Um, have considerable powers, if, if that makes sense. You, you know your stuff. And this is the week for you to just show strength and say, like, you know what? Whoever is trying to walk all over me, right? If I put a caribou in front of myself, like this is your, your animal guide for this week, um, he or she or the situation would probably reconsider seeing me as weak, right? So you are not weak by any means, right? And it's just time for you, sounds a bit weird, but that's how I get it from the guides. Get a crib, right? Get, pull yourself together, if that makes sense. And, 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 and without being, because it's nothing that I get, without being frustrated all the time, decide, you know what, I'm gonna not be frustrated, I'm just gonna be <laughs> pushy and straightforward and Get, take the bulls, take the caribou, take the bull by the horn <coughs> and get things done and sorted. So we had that earlier um, here also with the overall energy, um, you know, so um, this is a good week. While it is also a week to, to recharge your battery, um, a couple of star signs already had this, you know, do something kind of thing. And uh, Libra clearly is a star sign that is being asked this week <coughs> to realize that this week you will have a lot of energy around you that helps you and that will help you with making changes for the better okay that was libras going into um, scorpio let's have a look what we got for scorpio hmm. <laughs> sometimes things change and sometimes th things are overlapping and stay the same now Remember the overall energy um, was all about realizing that um, there is a new moon coming in on the 11th and so um, as you see it from Earth, 0% of the moon are illuminated. Therefore, being in this dark space that then allows you to, to stop everything and do new things, have new beginnings, <coughs> right? In Scorpio's case, they're asking you this week to contemplate your life, meditate, and get in touch with your guides, right? So, in other words, there are things that you always wanted to do that will come up this week and you will be reminded um, of your dreams and your desires. Therefore, if you're not doing any of this, you will naturally be pissed off, right? So what the guides are saying is all your dreams need is some sort of a practical plan. So get your analytical head on while you're also um, staying away from analysis by just meditating and probably meeting with your guides. But think things through. I cannot pronounce the H easily, so I hope you understood me. Think things through. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Duh. That's all the guides are saying to you this week, right? Your dream needs some sort of a practical plan. Write things down, plan things out, analyze on how to go about things, uh, and therefore, and thereby, putting it into action, okay? That was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. Let's have a look what we, 
what we got for Sagittarians. A very good energy this week for Sagittarians. Because what the guides are saying to you is use the energy of the new beginning, really, really important, and hmm, not only go for it, but aim high, right? So a measured response to everything is normally, or oftentimes what the guides really say to people is a good thing. They're not saying that to you. <laughs> what they're saying is aim high, go for it, right? Decide I am making changes to my reality. And that's a very good way of manifesting these changes to come to you quickly, right? So short and sweet for Sagittarians going into Capricorn. We're looking at the week of May the 10th to the 16th, 2021. You have the grizzly bear and the Arctic fox. So Capricorns. What the guides are saying to you is, this is a week for you to take a backseat from too much action. Take a backseat from all the drama and, that you have in your life. If people come to you because you're the person that is giving, so, so you attract <coughs> You likely attract people who have a needy side. They're not bad people. They just need help, right? Um, you're not necessarily here to change people's life, mm. right? So what they're saying to you is this week, take a back seat, take time out, because what I'm getting for you, especially since you have the, the Arctic Fox here, is to realize that you may not do so well yourself energetically, and therefore, you need to have some time out, but the, the, the energy and the word that the guides give me, <coughs> <excuse> me <coughs> for Capricorns is to step away from drama. So anything in your life that is loud needs to be put aside this week, right? So that's that. That was Capricorn. Going to the next star sign, which is Aquarius. We have Aquarius, Pisces, and Aries left. Let's have a look for what we got for Aquarians, right? For those of you who are followers of my channel and who watch this um, weekly or as often as I record, if that makes sense, <coughs> you will have noticed, especially if you are Aquarians, that lately, no matter what week you look at, at least in the last four or five weeks, <coughs> the guys have always said to Aquarians, you may be at crossroads, but opportunities come your way, don't procrastinate, right? You're in a good place, um, and even if you don't know it yet, right, whatever comes to your mind is working. That was sort of the energy that we had for Aquarians for over a month. Now we're at the week of May the 10th to the 16th. Things are changing slightly this week for you. <coughs> in that you have, it sounds weird, and it's not a warning as such, it's just a message for Aquarians to be a bit more aware of your surroundings while you have had a lot of support, not only obviously from the guides, but also from life itself and from opportunities that just open up for you. Um, and so you had a very strong energy in the last four weeks. This is the week now for you to pay attention to, to your immediate surroundings. Right? Who in my environment <laughs> drains my energy? Who in my environment may not be entirely on my side. That's sort of the thoughts that, that, that the guides asked me to <coughs> convey to you, Aquarians. Right? You have the ring-necked pheasant, which is basically an animal that is very intelligent and yet um, one of the most shot birds in the UK, at least. So in other words, um, even though your communication is clear, 
you what you say makes sense not everybody is listening and sometimes people just look for anything to attack you on and i also get the feeling that a lot of people you will be speaking to this week will probably be slightly jealous because you show them or you showed them what is what is possible when you have an open mind right and not everybody likes that right if that makes sense and then you have the screech owl which obviously is you know the owl is the one that you know tilts its head you know so therefore what the, what the, what the depiction is is for you to look around you and pay attention um, to um, what's going on and assess who is or isn't on your side then also most owls are obviously nocturnal and so therefore you get better ideas and clearer visions also in the evening so please 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 use that week for journeying for meditating um, in the evening um, because you have a you stand a better chance to to connect if that makes sense right that was aquarius we have pisces and aries left going into the second last star sign of the week we're looking at the week of may the 10th to the 16th this is my star sign <laughs> pisces so let's have a look what we got for Pisceans. <laughs> okay, a couple of things. What the guides are saying to us Pisceans this week is to take a deep breath and even though not all the things in your life are peachy and, and, and super positive and great, look at the bigger picture. In other words, focus on what is great in your life. Focus on what is happening here, right? That makes me feel, yeah, I am welcome and I am supported, if that makes sense, right? Um, so look at the bigger picture, if that makes sense. <clears throat> and the bigger picture is telling you to always be in the now, which is really, really important for Pisceans this week because by default, we're dreamers. And there's nothing wrong with dreaming and, and, and manifesting a new beginning, which is also, also um, happening this week because we have the new moon. Right? So the thoughts shouldn't stop, but the urgency of, of achieving that straight away um, is not needed. All the guides are saying to us Pisceans this week, calm down a little. Don't be too upset about stuff that really hasn't manifested yet that isn't working. And, um, and what I'm getting strongly <coughs> is that whatever it is you plan, and not just long term, but whatever it is that you are manifesting, really already lies ahead for you. Right? So this depiction here, this card here says prosperity lies ahead. Even though it's a, it's a bit of a strong word. Right? It also means that support is there. So whatever you manifest, right, is in the process of showing up for you, right? Short and sweet for us Pisceans, not bad, really cool actually. And now we're going to the last star sign for the week, which is Aries. Okay, this is... Um, Sometimes I get weird songs and stuff that come into my mind <coughs> and I'm getting a diamond shape for Aries. Um, and I get, so I get a diamond shape, uh, which means there's a, it, it, the shape that I'm seeing is a diamond shape and there's sun coming on it. So there's a prism and um, the light goes everywhere. And yet I'm hearing the song uh, by Pink Floyd, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. You know, remember when you were young, you shone like the sun, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so what they're saying to you is, this is a good week for you to just relax a little, right? And let the energy work on your behalf and for you, because you have the Muldia and the River Otter regardless of that song and that diamond shape that they just gave me this is just another angle and very likely a different type of guide that just came in um to do that to do that because i work with different guides when i do my readings and then every now and then when i get other stuff like songs there are other guides if that makes sense right <laughs> and they work well together so all the messages are still 
for you Aries, <coughs> but you have the mule deer and the river otter. And so the deer by default says to you, just relax, right? Too much stress and you bolt. Really, really important, therefore, to not allow yourself to feel and to have that much stress. Right? And then you have the river otter, which also means because you have the otter, which is an animal that sort of holds hands with other otters when they sleep so they don't drift away. So there's symbolism here. <coughs> and the symbology is that you are needed. You are by default, based on the energy that I'm getting off that card and the message that sort of comes in here. You need to realize without ego that you are a healer and believe you me, we need more healers. So what I'm getting for you is to rest this week, let the universe work on your behalf because remember you had a diamond shape and then the, sun, the, the light came in and light went everywhere, <laughs> which means you are being seen, you are getting somewhere, your energy is traveling. But what I'm getting strongly for you is that you are needed in a bigger context because you are a healer and so please reflect on how you live your life how much of a giver you are in life and um, when the guys tell me you're a healer it really means that you have the right to be <laughs> to be um uh, there has to be an exchange so if you do good and you give people advice you are entitled uh, for an exchange, be this monetary or, or, or in any other way. So when people keep coming to you and you are sorting all their stuff out, that does not necessarily bode well for you because when, when you give people tech, so what I'm getting is, because that is the energy that you give me with regards to a healer, is to realize for Aries that your time is valuable, right? So limit the time that you give to people, especially because they give me, they're doing this, which means repetition. <coughs> so you hear the same stuff over and over again, and somehow nothing ever changes. And unless people change, they will go in circles and may not find a solution. And ultimately, as a healer, you tell people where to look, not what to do, because you're not them, right? So please reflect on how much energy you allow people to take for free and maybe look into whether or not it's time for you to do something with that gift and with these gifts that you have. Okay, yeah, thank you all for watching. That's all we have time for. As I always say, um, please share this widely. If it resonated with you, there's a good chance it will resonate with someone else. So please, 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 please share. And also please subscribe to the channel and um, like the Facebook page. So you always know when some new video is uploaded or when there are uh, things uh, happening and all that kind of stuff. So right? why not use it? It's a free service. Okay, that's all we got time for. Bye-bye.